Section two of the Dream of Durantius by John Henry Newman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Russ Hobbs. Phase four. Soul. But hark! Upon my sense comes a fierce hubbub, which would make me fear could I be frighted. Angel. We are now arrived close on the judgment court. That sullen howl is from the demons who assemble there. It is the middle region, where of old Satan appeared among the sons of God, to cast his jibes and scoffs at holy Job. So now his legions throng the vestibule, hungry and wild to claim their property, and gather souls for hell, hissed to their cry. Soul. How sour! and how uncouth a dissonance demons low-born clods of brute earth they aspire to become gods by a new birth and an extra grace and a score of merits as if aught could stand in place of the high thought and the glance of fire of the great spirits the powers blessed the lords by right the primal owners of the proud dwelling and realm of light, dispossessed, thrust aside, chucked down by the sheer might of a despot's will, of a tyrant's frown, who after expelling their host gave triumphant still, and still unjust, each forfeit crown, to psalm droners, and canting groaners, to every slave and pious cheat, and crawling knave who licked the dust under his feet. Angel. It is the restless panting of their being, like beast of prey, who caged within their bars, in a deep hideous purring have their life, and an incessant pacing to and fro. Demons. The mind bold and independent, the purpose free, so we are told must not think to have the ascendant what's a saint one whose breath doth the air taint before his death a bundle of bones which fools adore <laughs> when life is o'er which rattle and stink e'en in the flesh we cry his pardon no flesh hath he <laughs> for it hath died tis crucified day by day afresh afresh <laughs> that holy clay <laughs> this gains guerdon so priestlings prate <laughs> before the judge and pleads and atones for spite and grudge and bigot mood and envy and hate and greed of blood soul how impotent they are and yet on earth they have repute for wondrous power and skill, and books describe how that the very face of the evil one, if seen, would have a force even to freeze the blood and choke the life of him who saw it. Angel In thy trial state thou hast a traitor nestling close at home, con natural, who, with the powers of hell, was leagued, and of thy senses kept the keys, and to that deadliest foe unlock thy heart. And therefore is it, in respect of man, those fallen ones show so majestical, but when some child of grace, angel or saint, pure and upright in his integrity of nature, meets the demons on their raid, they scud away as cowards from the fight. Nay, oft hath holy hermit in his cell not yet disburdened of mortality, mocked at their threats and warlike overtures, or dying when they swarmed like flies around, defied them and departed to his judge. Demons Virtue and vice, a knave's pretense, tis all the same, ha, ha! Dread of hell-fire, of the venomous flame, a coward's plea give him his price saint though he be 
<laughs> from shrewd good sense he'll slave for hire <laughs> and does but aspire to the heaven above with sordid aim and not from love ha <laughs> ha soul i see not those false spirits shall i see my dearest master when i reach his throne or hear at least his awful judgment word with personal intonation as i now hear thee not see thee angel hitherto all has been darkness since i left the earth shall i remain thus sight bereft all through my penance time if so how comes it then that i have hearing still and taste and touch yet not a glimmer of that princely sense which binds ideas in one and makes them live angel nor touch nor taste nor hearing hast thou now thou livest in a world of signs and types the presentations of most holy truths living and strong which now encompass thee a disembodied soul thou hast by right no converse with aught else beside thyself but lest so stern a solitude should load and break thy being in mercy are vouchsafed some lower measures of perception which seem to thee as though through channels brought through ear or nerves or palate which are gone and thou art wrapped and swathed around in dreams dreams that are true yet enigmatical for the belongings of thy present state save through such symbols come not home to thee and thus thou tellest of space and time and size of fragrant solid bitter musical of fire and of refreshment after fire as let me use similitude of earth to aid thee in the knowledge thou dost ask as ice which blisters may be said to burn nor hast thou now extension with its parts correlative long habit cozens thee nor power to move thyself nor limbs to move hast thou not heard of those who after loss of hand or foot still cried that they had pains in hand or foot as though they had it still so is it now with thee who hast not lost thy hand or foot but all which made up man so will it be until the joyous day of resurrection when thou wilt regain all thou hast lost new made and glorified how even now the consummated saints see god in heaven i may not explicate meanwhile let it suffice thee to possess such means of converse as are granted thee though till that beatific vision thou art blind for e'en thy purgatory which comes like fire is fire without its light soul his will be done i am not worthy e'er to see again the face of day far less his countenance who is the very sun nathless in life when i looked forward to my purgatory it ever was my solace to believe that ere i plunged amid the avenging flame i had one sight of him to strengthen me angel nor rash nor vain is that presentiment yes for one moment thou shalt see thy lord thus will it be what time thou art arraigned before the dread tribunal and thy lot is cast for ever should it be to sit on his right hand among his pure elect then sight or that which to thy soul is sight as by a lightning flash will come to thee and thou shalt see amid the dark profound whom thy soul loveth and would fain approach one moment but thou knowest not my child what thou dost ask that sight of the most fair will gladden thee but it will pierce thee too soul thou speakest darkly angel 
and an awe falls on me, and a fear lest I be rash. Angel There was a mortal who is now above in the mid-glory. He, when near to die, was given communion with the crucified, such that the master's very wounds were stamped upon his flesh, and from the agony which thrilled through body and soul in that embrace, learned that the flame of the everlasting love doth burn ere it transform. Phase 5 Hark to those sounds! They come of tender beings angelical, least and most childlike of the sons of God. First Choir of Angelicals Praise to the holiest in the height, and in the depths be praise, in all his words most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. To us his elder race he gave to battle and to win, without the chastisement of pain, without the soil of sin. The younger son he willed to be a marvel in his birth, spirit and flesh his parents were, his home was heaven and earth. The Eternal blessed his child, and armed, and sent him hence afar, to serve as champion in the field of elemental war, to be his viceroy in the world of matter and of sense, upon the frontier towards the foe a resolute defense. Angel We have now passed the gate, and are within the house of judgment, and whereas on earth temples and palaces are formed of parts costly and rare, but all material, so in the world of spirits naught is found to mould withal, and form into a whole, but what is immaterial. And thus the smallest portions of this edifice, cornice or frieze or balustrade or stair, the very pavement is made up of life, of holy, blessed, and immortal beings, who hymn their Maker's praise continually. Second Choir of Angelicals Praise to the holiest in the height, and in the depth be praise, in all his words most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. Woe to the man, for he was found a recreant in the fight, and lost his heritage of heaven and fellowship with light. Above him now the angry sky, around the tempest din, who once had angels for his friends, had but the brutes for kin. O oh, man, a savage kindred they, to flee that monster brood, he scaled the seaside cave, and clomb the giants of the wood. With now a fear, and now a hope, with aids which chance supplied, from youth to eld, from sire to son, he lived and toiled and died. He dreed his penance age by age, and step by step began slowly to doff his savage garb, and be again a man. And quickened by the Almighty's breath, and chastened by his rod, and taught by angel visitings, at length he sought his God, and learned to call upon his name, and in his faith create a household, and a fatherland, a city, and a state. Glory to him who from the mire in patient length of days elaborated into life a people to his praise. Soul The sound is like the rushing of the wind, the summer wind among the lofty pines, swelling and dying echoing round about, now here, now distant, wild and beautiful, while scattered from the branches it has stirred, descend ecstatic odors. Third Choir of Angelicals Praise to the holiest in the height, and in the depth be praise, in all his words most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. 
the angels as beseemingly to spirit kind was given at once were tried and perfected and took their seats in heaven for them no twilight or eclipse no growth and no decay twas hopeless all engulfing night or beatific day but to the younger race there rose a hope upon its fall and slowly surely gracefully the morning dawned on all and ages opening out divide the precious and the base and from the hard and sullen mass mature the heirs of grace o oh man albeit the quickening ray lit from his second birth makes him at length what once he was and heaven grows out of earth yet still between that earth and heaven his journey and his goal a double agony awaits his body and his soul a double debt he has to pay the forfeit of his sins the chill of death is past and now the penance fire begins glory to him who evermore by truth and justice reigns who tears the soul from out its case and burns away its stains angel they sing of thy approaching agony which thou so eagerly didst question of it is the face of the incarnate god shall smite thee with that keen and subtle pain and yet the memory which it leaves will be a sovereign febrifuge to heal the wound and yet withal it will the wound provoke and aggravate and widen it the more soul thou speakest mysteries still methinks i know to disengage the tangle of thy words yet rather would i hear thy angel voice than for myself be thy interpreter angel when then if such thy lot thou seest thy judge the sight of him will kindle in thy heart all tender gracious reverential thoughts thou wilt be sick with love and yearn for him and feel as though thou couldst but pity him that one so sweet should e'er have placed himself at disadvantage such as to be used so vilely by a being so vile as thee there's a pleading in his pensive eyes will pierce thee to the quick and trouble thee and thou wilt hate and loathe thyself for though now sinless thou wilt feel that thou hast sinned as never thou didst feel and wilt desire to slink away and hide thee from his sight and yet wilt have a longing eye to dwell within the beauty of his countenance and these two pains so counter and so keen the longing for him when thou seest him not the shame of self at thought of seeing him will be thy veriest sharpest purgatory soul my soul is in my hand i have no fear in his dear might prepared for weal or woe but hark a grand mysterious harmony it floods me like the deep and solemn sound of many waters angel we have gained the stairs which rise towards the presence chamber there a band of mighty angels keep the way on either side and him the incarnate god angels of the sacred stair father whose goodness none can know but they who see thee face to face by man hath come the infinite display of thy victorious grace but fallen man the creature of a day skills not that love to trace it needs to tell the triumph thou hast wrought an angel's deathless fire an angel's reach of thought it needs that very angel who with awe amid the garden shade the great creator in his sickness saw soothed by a creature's aid and agonized 
as victim of the law which he himself had made. For who can praise him in his depth and height but he who saw him reel amid that solitary fight? Soul. Hark, for the lentils of the presence gate are vibrating and echoing back the strain. Fourth Choir of Angelicals Praise to the holiest in the height, and in the depth be praise, in all his words most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. The foe blasphemed the holy Lord, as if he reckoned ill, in that he placed his puppet-man the frontier place to fill. For even in his best estate, with amplest gifts endued, a sorry sentinel was he, a being of flesh and blood, as though a thing, who for his help must needs possess a wife, could cope with those proud rebel hosts who had angelic life. And when, by blandishment of Eve, that earth-born Adam fell, he shrieked in triumph, and he cried, A sorry sentinel! The Maker by his word is bound. Escape or cure is none. He must abandon to his doom and slay his darling son. Angel And now the threshold, as we traverse it, utters aloud its glad responsive chant. Fifth Choir of Angelicals Praise to the holiest in the height, and in the depth be praise, in all his words most wonderful, most sure, in all his ways. O loving wisdom of our God, when all was sin and shame, a second Adam to the fight and to the rescue came. O wisest love, that flesh and blood which did in Adam fail, should strive afresh against the foe, should strive and should prevail, and that a higher gift than grace should flesh and blood refine God's presence and his very self and essence all divine. O oh, generous love that he who smote in man for man the foe the double agony in man for man should undergo. And in the garden secretly, and on the cross on high, should teach his brethren and inspire to suffer and to die. Phase 6 Angel Thy judgment now is near, for we are come into the veiled presence of our God. Soul I hear the voices that I left on earth. Angel It is the voice of friends around thy bed, who say the subvenite with the priest. Hither the echoes come. Before the throne stands the great angel of the agony, the same who strengthened him, what time he knelt lone in the garden shade, bedewed with blood. That angel best can plead with him for all tormented souls, the dying and the dead. Angel of the Agony Jesu, by that shuddering dread which fell on thee, Jesu, by that cold dismay which sickened thee, Jesu, by that pain of heart which thrilled in thee, Jesu, by that mount of sins which crippled thee, Jesu, by that sense of guilt which stifled thee, Jesu, by that innocence which girdled thee, Jesu, by that sanctity which reigned in thee, Jesu, by that Godhead which was one with thee, Jesu, spare these souls which are so dear to thee, Souls who in prison calm and patient wait for thee, hasten, Lord, their hour, and bid them come to thee, to that glorious home, where they shall ever gaze on thee. Soul, I go before my judge. Ah. 
angel. Praise to his name. The eager spirit has darted from my hold, and with the intemperate energy of love flies to the dear feet of Emmanuel. But ere it reach them the keen sanctity, which with its effluence, like a glory, clothes and circles round the crucified, has seized and scorched and shriveled it, and now it lies passive and still before the awful throne. O oh, happy suffering soul! For it is safe, consumed yet quickened by the glance of God. Soul, take me away, and in the lowest deep there let me be. And there in hope the lone night watches keep, told out for me there, motionless and happy in my pain, lone, not forlorn. There will I sing my sad perpetual strain until the morn. There will I sing and soothe my stricken breast, which ne'er can cease to throb and pine and languish till possessed of its soul peace. There will I sing my absent Lord in love, take me away, that sooner I may rise and go above and see him in the truth of everlasting day. Phase 7 Angel Now let the golden prison ope its gates, making sweet music as each fold revolves upon its ready hinge, and ye great powers, angels of purgatory, receive from me my charge, a precious soul, until the day when from all bond and forfeiture released, I shall reclaim it for the courts of light. Souls in Purgatory 1. Lord, thou hast been our refuge in every generation. 2. Before the hills were born and the world was, from age to age thou art God. 3. Bring us not, Lord, very low, for thou hast said, Come back again, ye sons of Adam. 4. A thousand years before thine eyes are but as yesterday, and as a watch of the night which is come and gone. 5. The grass springs up in the morning, at evening tide it shrivels up and dies. 6. So we fail in thine anger, and in thy wrath are we troubled. 7. Thou hast set our sins in thy sight, and our round of days in the light of thy countenance. 8. Come back, O Lord, how long, and be entreated for thy servants. 9. In thy morning we shall be filled with thy mercy, we shall rejoice and be in pleasure all our days. 10. We shall be glad according to the days of our humiliation, and the years in which we have seen evil. 11. Look, O Lord, upon thy servants, and on thy work, and direct their children. 12. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and the work of our hands establish thou it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Angel Softly and gently, dearly ransomed soul, in my most loving arms I now enfold thee, and o'er the penal waters as they roll I poise thee, and I lower thee, and hold thee, and carefully I dip thee in the lake, and thou without a sob or a resistance dost through the flood thy rapid passage take, sinking deep, deeper into the dim distance. Angels to whom the willing task is given, shall tend and nurse and lull thee as thou liest, and masses on the earth and prayers in heaven 
to aid thee at the throne of the Most Highest. Farewell, but not forever, brother dear. Be brave and patient on thy bed of sorrow. Swiftly shall pass thy night of trial here, and I will come and wake thee on the morrow. The End End of Section 2 End of The Dream of Gerontius by John Henry Newman